Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Oops, sorry. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. And uh, the first thing is roll call. Jessica Crosby. Here. Emily McGonigal will be here in a few minutes, you think. Tina Sather. Here. Joanne Smith. Here. Tony Corby. Here. Bruce Raveline. Here. Roxanne Skostad Deach here. Kevin Grover. Here. Mitch Erickson, not here. And we will do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, could I get a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, we are now at open forum. Do we have any? Think to open forum? No. Okay. And now we're at tenure recogni recognition. Um, could I have a resolution to award tenure to all four at the same time? If that's okay, I'll read their names and go through the tenure. Could I have a motion? I'll motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Oh, no, no, no. no. Go, go oh. ahead and read. Oh, yeah, you want sorry. me to read it first then? Dokey, dokey. <laughs> I certainly know. Okay. Whereas Jordan Bright, Sasha Moss, Tylin Ty McDonald, and Adam Matthews have served their required number of years of probationary teaching as prescribed by MS 122A.40, and whereas Jordan Bright, Sasha Moss, Tylin, uh, McDonald and Adam Matthews have successfully met the instructional and professional standards of ISD 361 International Falls Public Schools as determined by their immediate supervisors, Melissa Tate and Tim Everson, and whereas Melissa Tate Principal, Tim Everson Principal, and Kevin Grover Superintendent now recommend Jordan Bright, Sasha Moss, Tylan McDonald, and Adam Matthews to the school board for faculty tenure, be it resolved that Jordan Bright, Sasha Moss, Tyler McDonald, and Adam Matthews, upon recommendation of the administration, be granted fa faculty tenure to the extent of 1.0 FTE with all its privileges and responsibilities, effective the 2023 to 2024 school year. The motion for the adoption of the foregoing resolution was duly seconded by Tina. 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 Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, and now we have the candidates. Jordan Bright, in recognition of receiving faculty tenure with all the privileges and responsibilities, Independent School District number 361, tenure date May 15, 2023. Congratulations. Jordan. Oh, thank you. I was saying I never got a clap when I got my Sorry. Sasha Moss. In recognition of receiving faculty tenure with all the privileges and responsibilities, Independent School District number 361, Tyler McDonald, in recognition of receiving faculty tenure with all the privileges and responsibilities, Independent School District number 361, tenure date May 15, 2023. Congratulations, Tyler. Way to go, Tyler. Thank you. Adam Matthews, in recognition of receiving faculty tenure with all the privileges and responsibilities, Independent School District number 
361, 10-year date, May 16, 2023. Congratulations, Good job. on the um, payable summary before we approve it? You can ask. I don't know if I'll be able to answer or not. <laughs> well, they're easy. Know. They're oh, easy. Okay. Easy questions. Um, what's Northland Learning Center? North, Northland Learning Center is our special ed co-op. Oh, so that's the, gotcha. Okay. We mainly get our services. If we were closer, like our ALC would be through them as right. well, but we mainly get our sites and our testing. And okay. Our, um, director and so on. Perfect. Okay. Um, also, I didn't realize that we had to pay entry fees for every track meet and golf meet. Track, golf, I mean, m most things like that you do because it's it's random teams that come like, you You know, basketball, for instance, I'm just picking, we usually don't pay anything when we no. go to deer, but they, you know, you section. do one, you, you get one, you get one type deal, but like track meets, you know, we host usually one, maybe two. Yeah. So depending on how many you go, you, go, you pay everyone. And the same like with golf, typically you pay per golf golfer. Uh -huh. You know, like if we're only sending two people, we don't pay the same as if we're sending six or okay. seven or eight. But that's... So that's pretty standard. Pretty standard, I yeah. didn't realize and, that. And there's even, you, you know, um, swim, some swim meets, invitationals, they do a, a similar deal because, again, it's one thing if we're having just a dual meet, yeah. you know, going back and forth. But when it's, you know, do you want to participate or not, they often have a... Oh, okay. That was news to me. What about what DFC grant evaluator? The, the DFC grant is what Janessa runs. So anything that the, the, the well, it's drug free communities. It started as that, but it's it's the grant that she's running. So anything DFC is approved and for the most part required. Now there's some leeway, but everything is approved. You know, like payments, like this evaluator, mm -hmm. you had to have that position. They tell you what you pay the position. It's part of the grant. Oh, it's part of the grant. Yeah, okay. Even their like, like, don't take the wrong way, but even Janessa's wage, like or not, that's that's dictated yeah. by the grant. Okay. You know, and what she gets for a raise okay. and so on. And then my last one is, um, what is Tech Check? Tech Check is a program that, that Mike uses. I I don't know exactly all what it does, but Mike, it's, a, it's a software yeah. program. For thirty thousand dollars. I I think it manages. Like it says, <clears throat> part of the system. I can get more information, but that's that's what that's. Okay. Um, Interesting. Yeah. All right. Okay. Just just as a question, I was I, I was confused because don't we usually get a motion first and then we question Ty things? Typically, I mean, typically. I, that's why I didn't answer you right. Yeah. I was like, I'm looking like I don't want to do it. Because we can have an emotion in a second. We can still pull things. Yeah. You know, someone so mm -hmm. typically. Okie dokie. Now, let's see. Where are we at then? I forgot. Approve a motion. The approve the, no. Consent agenda. Consent agenda. A motion to approve the consent agenda. We didn't get our first yet, did no. we? Okay. So, well, since I asked all Emily. the questions. Oh, she's going to motion? Okay. I was going to say. You want to do second? I will. Mm -hmm. All right. Good for you. I held everything up. All righty. That's okay. All those in favor? Oh, if oh. I can just, um, I was just, I'll throw a couple comments just so you're aware. When you get down to the, the, um, Second reading of the policies, um, those are ones we had last month. The first reading, which I think is 18 and on, um, Rox, Jessica, and I did meet. There's a few, I mean, most of the recommendations or changes in there, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 were from MSBA. There were a couple minor things that we, we did. Um, 29 and on, those are the summer programming. You know, the ESSER is the COVID money, but it's, you, you may see people and go, why are we hiring? I'm just going to pick Joe Morrison, for instance, because not hired for summer school right. technically or summer programming so that's that whole list um number 51 uh there's some uh, furniture for west end yep. that's coming out of capital it's a little larger again we have capital reserve money there was forty-three thousand or something that we had set aside we're doing a little more but again there's there's reserve money and there's not an issue um, and then 52 is the per cycle, and, and again, that's science is up. Yeah, that was slated. Yep, yeah. yep. But again, I'm just throwing it out there. It's we had 120,000 in there, 
So it's it's yeah. 16, 16 and a half, 17,000 yes. under, which it will, well, which is good, but it's there's no guarantee that. But, so that'll get ordered, be here for next year. Um, and is that, did you say that's for all grades, science for every single it's grade? It's K-12, yeah. and, okay. and typically, and it's going to change a little bit. Um, in the past, like when we've done math, we've done math, pre-K through 12. Um, we've done English, we've done it that way. We're going to, after this go around, we're going to follow a similar schedule to what the, I'm going to say the range schools are. Again, it's going to do a whole system, but for some reason they do, for the most part, elementary for one group. For instance, it might be science for pre-K through five or six, and then it might be English for seven through 12. They just have them broke up different. The only advantage, not that no one has to buy, it's just possibly we can do some training, we can do you know some things collaboratively. Again, they've done it, or a bunch of schools have done it. They order different things, I and mean, we're not locked in. They just bring in the providers. You know, there's only a handful of them for the most part, and you at least can work with some people similar to you instead of us doing it same group. So it's not going to change. It's just going to the, the cycle will um, shift a little bit. One quick question on the the hirings for the summer school. Yep. I know it's all funded through ESSER, but how many kids do we have? I mean, it's all it's all final, right? Like it's signed up. Well, for the most part, and I'm not saying they wouldn't add someone. I don't know the exact number. I know earlier when I'd asked Missy, the like K through two was about ten kids less than last year, and the three through six was about the same. Now, whether that's changed, I don't know. I'm just looking elementary. If anyone would know or not, um, but it's good number. That Did it, Missy's right over there sorry. hiding. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know the numbers off. Yep. But look, it's very close to last year. I mean, it's close to a couple hundred kids for sure. Okay. I was just looking at the number of paras that we were hiring for the summer. It just seemed like a lot. Oh, you should go over there and visit. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is a wonderful program. Oh, I'm sure. And the kids are happy to f to be in a place that is a lot of fun yeah. in the summer as opposed to uh, more academics. This is lots of fun. Good. You should stop by. That's great. But I, I mean, will. just say it was for one of kids. That's pushing 45%. Yes. Yeah, you know, that's, that's good for a summer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's really good, that's yeah. Awesome. No, I'm not questioning the program at all. I was just looking yeah. at the numbers. Yeah. And some of those pairs are still one-to-one. -one yep. In the sure. I mean, they're all used for different things. We are still waiting. We are getting posted in the student bulletin for one more staff member, and that's it. Okie doke. Do you have more, Jessica? <laughs> No, not right now. I questions? will later. Okie dokie. <laughs> All right, now we're on. Um, did so we have, have a second? Motion a second. Yep. Okay, second. all those aye in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, it passed. And now we are going to go to down the pages. And I circled it. Okay. The we're at action items, right, Kevin? Yep. Okay. Under um, improving systems and structures to create a culture where all are welcome and supported, um, the rev resolution to accept gifts and donations. Could I have a motion? I'll move. I'll second. Okay. And now I'm going to read that. Whereas School Board Policy 706 establishes the guidelines for the acceptance of gifts or donations to the district, whereas I follow School District Board encourages the support of the district's educational programs through gifts or donations that meet the goals and objectives of the school district, whereas Minnesota Statute 465.03 states the school board may accept a gift, grant, or devise of real or personal property only by the adoption of a resolution approved by two-thirds of its members. Therefore, be it resolved, the School Board of International Falls Public Schools ISD 361 accepts with, the appreciate, with appreciation the following gifts, donations, or grants received by the school district. Um, Elks Bowling League, for, uh, which is a community ad donation of $500. Northern Reliable Insurance, Bronco Hall of Fame donation, $250. Corporate Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola Coca Give, G-I-V-E, I don't know what that stands for, but FHS donation of $34.15. 
Woodworkers Lodge W33 prom donation of $100, Bronco Football Boosters Football Equipment $3,953.67, Bronco Baseball Boosters Baseball Char Charter Bus, $1,938.50. Box Tops for Education, FHS and FES, $18.85. Now, we had the motions. Um, is there, are there any questions about that or anything? Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, now we are at action item 1B, and uh, it is to approve a three-year leave of absence request from Trim, Tim Ringhofer starting 2023 to 2024 school year as a 1.0 FTE math teacher per MS 122A.46 and approve the hire of Tim Ringhofer as activities director effective July 1st, 2023. Could, is there anything else I have to read about that one? No. It, could I have a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Can I ask a question? question? Yeah, discussion. discussion first. Yeah. yeah, we yeah. need to have some conversation. Yeah. Well, let's converse. <laughs> I know, everybody looks at me, I'm sorry. I don't That's mean right. to hold up the whole process, no. but I'm struggling. I'm struggling okay. with this. And I'm struggling not because I don't think he'd do a great job, because I do. I think he's great with the sports and everything. Okay. But I struggle with a teach. I feel, like I told you in my email, it, the whole thing feels very calculated. And I guess the only thing I can throw is I don't know what in the process. I mean, all I can tell you is we took applications. There were 12 people that applied. So Missy, myself, and Beth, which is very typical, three or four people go through, do a first reading, and need to narrow down. We typically don't interview, you know, all 10, right. 12, whatever, so we narrowed it to six. Mm -hmm. We agreed on six. Mm -hmm. Then, as I explained to you, Tim, from a high school standpoint, because he's supervising high school activities, Missy is elementary, you know, so Missy was involved. Beth is community ed, because some of the community yep. ed is going to oversee some. And we pulled a past AD slash coach and did the interviews. They were unanimous, my understanding, on one. They couldn't decide if, because there's no guarantee, like with our other positions, we've offered to people and they haven't accepted. Mm -hmm. So they went to work on a second slash third, and they didn't come to an agreement. Well, we offered it to this one, took it, so we never got there. So I don't know. What else to say? Has Tim been upfront to me that he was going to apply for the job? Yeah. Years ago. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, earlier in the year. I mean, he asked probably six months ago when the conversation first started that, yeah. we, you know, I'm going to be interested. I mean, has he told people he was, I don't know what to tell you. You know, there's other people that were also upfront that they wanted to apply and they did. It, you know. it just, I guess I'm uncomfortable too. And I know there's nothing in the contract, so there's nothing anybody can do about it, but I would have assumed that in the teacher's contract there would be some sort of guideline around requesting leaves of, of absence and how often you can request a leave of absence and how long in between. I know there is for sabbaticals. For sabbatical there but is. But just for a regular leave of absence because it's just this, weird that he's coming back and then requesting another one. And, and this falls under the statutory, the 122.8.46, which is a, it, it, technically they call the three to five year leave. You can come back after one yep. or two, whatever, as long as you notify by February 1st or 15th or whatever for the upcoming year. So he was given a three year leave, that is correct. He notified us last year he's coming back at the end of two. Whether if this one to came along, he'd be back, you know, teaching. Mm -hmm. If you don't approve it, he will be back teaching. Right. You know. When it came up, like I said, I assumed if any teacher would have gotten it, they would request this, not that you have to approve them. Mm -hmm. It's just you're going from a union position that has some protection to an at will which technically doesn't have the same protection. So, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that a teacher would request that. Right. You know, um, that back to back, I didn't know if you truly could either. I read the statute, it doesn't say in there, so I called MSBA, had a conversation, and they said no, because there's no cost. Right. And the problem is it keeps someone hanging out there. You know, that's typically why you want to have, you know, three to five years, I guess, as an end point. Yeah. So, um, well, it's been my experience that it, 
Yeah, this it's that's typical language regarding leave of absence. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, I, I personally I don't have any issues with it. As a matter of fact, I uh, I'm uh, excited that Tim. Yeah, and again, I want it to be very clear that yeah. I do not question yeah. whether or not you will do a good. I think yeah. you'll do a fine job. Yeah, no. I just question the way it all came about. With yep, you. yep. And I, but I just want to go on record too, saying that you know Tim has has given a lot of hours, many many hours. Yes, he has. To Bronco activities and and, and he's uh, great with the radio and, and, and yep. the radio situation. And so and I, well. and I don't yeah. have any reason to believe that he's not going to do an exceptional job. Yeah. And if he does. doesn't do an exceptional job. Somebody will tell him. Yes. Well, and the flip side is, I guess I would ask, is there something we should have done different in the process? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I'm just asking because no different than any other position. No, I don't think know. so. I visited with a number of the interview panel, and uh, I got the same response from those that I spoke to. About I guess I don't have questions because I've asked my questions and I felt like they weren't really answered. I felt like... Can you hear me? Well, since they weren't I, here online, if there's anyone on. Yeah, I felt like we were kind of told... Um, I guess I talked to all the people on the interview committee as well just to get their opinion just from different things I'd heard. I talked to Jess, felt got her opinion. And I agree that the feedback I got from everybody was that they you know, they think Tim will be great, but people still feel that other people were not given an opportunity, almost like that they knew he was like Jess said, yeah. he was gonna get the position no matter what. Um, so I, I just feel too that a lot of good candidates weren't given the opportunity, even though just like everybody has said, I think Tim will do an excellent job as well. Um, I almost think that the people on the interview committee, some were kind of biased because they would have had the potential to be his boss had he not gotten that position. I guess, I don't know. They're going to be his boss one way or another. I know, but right, my recommendation, I guess I probably wouldn't have had Missy and Tim in on the interview, just my opinion. I would have had, oh, like I think Beth and Mr. Orlando were a good choice, sense. but yeah, and it made sense given what Beth does and Mr. Rolando used to have that position. I probably would have chose other staff to do the other portion of the well, and I, and Just I, as my feedback. Yeah. Sure, and that being said, yeah. it could go just the other way. Right, yep. You know, it, could, it could go against any candidate. Yes, yep. So right, yep, it could, it's, yep, uh, definitely. And I guess the only other thing I guess I would question then or ask is, you know, like if we're hiring, you know, an English teacher, Typically, at the high school level, I'd have Tim because he's the supervisor. Yeah. And then, you know, a couple, if we could, teachers. Sometimes we haven't been able to get to English teacher, you know, and so we would do an English teacher and someone else, you know, because typically the supervisor is involved. Of course. You know, yeah. and no different than, like, when a head coach, when we hire assistant coaches, we typically have the AD involved. We have the head coach involved. Well, and for the activities wanna, director, you're the supervisor, right? I, I am of the activity director yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis, though, for the most part. They work with Tim because any high school league activity, Tim is the end-all, be-all. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you realize that when there's issues. The high school principal is the end. Mm -hmm. I don't get to override him on anything. I, it's just the way it is. Yeah. Beth is going to be the, in essence, supervisor of any community mm -hmm. ed activity. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, if there's a problem with this person, yeah, the end-all is going to be me, but on a day-to-day -day basis, those two are going to work, and as well with Missy, if there's elementary activities, she's going to be, you know, involved with, hey, this isn't working in my building or whatever, and so to me, it made sense. I mean, the only criticism that I thought might come is should we had five or six people, you know, because those three made, and I wanted at least a coach, maybe a second coach, you know, we could have been another person, you know, of course, when it went kind of split there, if it went to kind of went should have had maybe five. You know, we would have had a second and third that day, you know, because at least I think, unless they had completely different. But I guess I just, like I said, I'm looking, there's something we should do different because we may hire other positions. You know, things come up. And so, I mean. Well, it is still in the policy that a school board member should be on that committee as well. I know you said you pulled it at some point, but it is listed online that a school board member should be sitting in on the. And I don't remember when we went, and again, if we haven't changed the policy, we can bring it back, that the, the board itself went away from that because you had one person with, I'm, I don't want to say inside information, but if they didn't agree with the group, we had a situation where they came back and went, oh, just so you know, I didn't agree. Mm -hmm. The other thing that needs to be aware is typically, we don't share who all the candidates are. You know, and maybe other businesses are different or whatever, but in our past practice, we haven't went and laid, okay, here's the six we interviewed. 
now a small town they all came through the front door for the most part mm -hmm. you, you know and interviewed and some people know and this and that um, there was one or two done um, via phone or you know um, computer but um, and we we typically you, you know don't necessarily give the board a hierarchy here was number two three four if it want it differently we should be public because mm -hmm. there are people mm -hmm. that you know don't want their whether that's right or wrong yeah. Bosses no one until we're going to check the record. Now there's others. I'll be honest. They tell you up front, I'm applying for a job. You know, I respect that. You know, but you can't require it. So we follow that. Like I said, other than superintendent, when you get to be a finalist, that is that is public. You know, and that's just part of the deal. So um, you, you know, I hope no one's sharing anything. They're just throwing it out. They're not supposed to share anything that would be private information from that interview. And it, you know, might put them in a bad place. I'm just throwing it out there. If, even myself, I don't go question, you know, Tim or Miss Hey. Yeah, I you, actually you don't know, know anybody. No, I'm just anything. throwing it out there. Yeah, yeah, you know, but because you did ask, and I replied at least two people that yeah. here's what we've done, and like I said. Um, so. Okay. Any more discussion on that? Okay, did it now I forgot because we have a long discussion and I know motion in a second. We got them both. So all all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now we're on one C. We'll, uh, rescind the April 17th, 2023 proposing the placement of Alex Manasa on unrequested leave of absence at uh, point eight one eight zero FTE, thereby reinstating Alex Manasa at a .8180 math teacher for the 2023 school year. Can I have a motion? So moved. Okay. Uh, does someone want to discuss it before we no, have a motion? No, second. Okay. I'll make a I, second. All right. Any discussion? So just so the board's aware, the reason, like Tim's a 1.0, the reason's a .818 is now we will have, Missy and I were working last week on Who's going to fill like one of the title or vice versa? It's you, you know, that's why there's a, a difference, and we'll find out if we have enough to exactly cover. It's how much people are pushing in and out, and that's part of the reason for um, pulling some people out that we're posting the five ed position is pulling all the people that people push down, so mm -hmm. to speak, um, and we're going to try filling that way. Um, so that's where we're at right now. I'm just trying to clarify. It's it's a puzzle. I mean, mm -hmm. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now we're at 1D, approve the 2023-2024 resolution for membership in the Minnesota State High School League. And now I'm gonna read this. Result that the governing, governing board or entity of International Falls High School located in the state of Minnesota delegates the control, supervision, and regulation of interscholastic activities and athletics referred to in Minnesota Statute Section 128C.01 to the Minnesota State High School League and so the hereby certifies to the State Commissioner of Education as provided for by the Minnesota Statutes. Further resolved that the school district is authorized by this, the governing board of said school district or school to renew its membership in the Minnesota State High School League and participate in the approved interscholastic activities and athletics sponsored by said league and its various subdivisions. Further resolved that this governing board or entity hereby adopts the constitution, bylaws, policies, rules, and regulations of said league and all amendments thereto as the same as are published in the latest edition of the league's official handbook on file at the office of the school district or school or as appears on the league's website as the minimum standards governing participation in said league sponsored activities and athletics. Further, the administration and responsibility for determining student eligibility and for the supervision of such activities and athletics are assigned to the official representatives identified by this governing board or entity. Signing this resolution for membership affirms that this governing board has reviewed all required membership materials provided by the league, which defines the purpose and value of education-based activity and athletic and programs 
and defines each member school's responsibility. That's the end of that. Could I get a motion? I'll move. Second. All those in favor? The, the um, only comment I was going to say, this is the annual renewal, mm -hmm. and there is a group of people, there's two places still left open. Um, Bill needs to find a parent and a student um, to fill. And again, they're technically, like I said, I put Bruce in where he's our high school league rep for this. Most of the time, the AD is on a lot of it. I'm on a certain thing, but like I said, it's an annual deal. We'll get a parent and a student. Typically, we try getting someone that's not a you know teacher. Um, and, and same thing, a student that is not a teacher's son or daughter or whatever, and they'll find that, and it goes in. So. Other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Under section 1.E, approve a project proposal with the Center for Effective School Operations, CESO, for compensation study and business office staffing analysis to be completed in two project phases. Cost of project for phase one compensation study, $4,860, and cost of staffing analysis is $2,160. Could I get a motion? So moved. Emily, second? I'll second. Okay, discussion. Okay, just so the board's on, on track, we had two, um, I don't want to call them bids because they're not really bids, two uh, responses to our request to get um, a breakdown, if you will, of salary and, and look at um, job duties. And we listed, there's 24 positions actually, okay? A good chunk of them were the at-will positions, and then the next chunk was the 510 group, you know, custodian, secretaries, janitor, uh, food service, so on, so on. We put it out, we got two responses. This one came back in uh, a group they would do in what they said would be done by quarter two, end of quarter two, so by the end of June, they could get the business services done, and they could also look at the, the pay um, and the, the number of people we have doing it. They could then, by the end of quarter three, have the other group of roughly 12, 13 job classifications. Okay. What month is that? Well, quarter, quarter three, three goes another three months down the road. Through so July, you know, August, yeah, September. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, they would do it in two groups. The other one came in as one proposal. It's, it's about $600 less, I'm going to be honest. Um, they, they work mainly with public groups. This one, their sole focus is on schools. And so the reason we chose this one are twofold. One, um, they actually um, are working with some schools that use Skyward right now, so they're, they're familiar with their user system. Not that it has to be, they're gonna look at positions, but they have, you know, they have knowledge there. They solely work with schools, which we thought was a good thing when you're gonna start comparing, not that you can't compare, you know, a custodian with, um, you know, city, county, whatever. We just felt that was, the other thing was they broke in two groups. If, this first thing doesn't go well, we're not out the complete money. You, you see what I'm saying? It's another 4860 to do the second group. We thought if we got it, you know, and this really doesn't help us at all, it might be better than going, you know, all in, you know. But um, I guess, you know, I'm gonna recommend that we move forward and, and see how it goes and... Um, I would just like to say that, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad we're doing this because um, we've recently had, you know, concern about uh, the wages of people. We've had people that we've lost good people to wages that are higher, and we don't. We're kind of in in a little bit of a pickle right now, trying to keep our staff and everything. So we want to be fair to everyone, and yet it's pretty tough to know what what the going rate should be when you're um, competing with private agencies versus a school. So it makes it hard to keep good staff too at times. So I'm glad we're doing it. Any other discussion? But can I say something, please? Um, are we yeah, gonna open it up to the... I no, think it, I can. Just a minute, Missy. I'm talking to him first. You're, it's your board it's meeting. It's my board meeting. I'm gonna go with you first. The only question I had when you said that it's a good thing because you're comparing to the public sector. Well, we're not though. If he said we're only comparing to other schools, we're not comparing to... PC no, I mean that we're or... losing people to private. Oh, okay. No, yeah. they, they are going to look. Well, they at, are going you know, to. The, okay. What I said is CISO 
solely works with schools. That's their start. You, you, oh, you know, okay. they, they will compare as much as they can okay. to the city and the county. Because that's not who we're competing with. Those are public schools. agencies they can get info for. Okay. Now, whether they can get info from other places, you know, yep. for instance, PCA doesn't have to give. You know, right. I mean, you can do a data request to public groups, schools, county, city, okay. so they can compare. No, I just said the two differences, and I forget the name of the other company, is a public sector that they focus on all, they would do schools, but they focus on government, they will, you know, comes where this one typically, their only responses are with schools, and that was one of the pieces we thought maybe put, you know, a little more familiar with what, you know, whether it's a business office, okay. whether it's a, you know, sense. payroll person. Again, payroll is similar, but it's not exactly the same whether it's county, city, yeah. um, and so. So the, are they also going to do comparisons like within our local area? How you said, you know, the bus drivers in Little Fork are being offered quite a bit more than the bus drivers here? Correct. That, that would technically be part of it. Okay. You, you, you know, now again, they'll they'll pick. My understanding is they're not going to do every school in the state. Yeah, you know, yep. they're going to pick similar size and somewhat in the region. Okay. Yeah, you know, and get a handful well of, of places to compare to, and then you know, um, we have just a little bit of conversation with both groups, also city, county, yeah, you know, and see where we're at, and they'll give you know comparison recommendation. You know, now if you want them to come up with a plan, I mean, there's other groups that, you know, they'll do more, you know, if you want more service, but that's all we asked for. You know, um, there's there's one, both of them said, oh, we can give you plans on how to, you know, fix if you're out of what they feel out of range and a, you know, two, three step process maybe to get there. Now, again, we didn't ask for that. You know, there are options down the road if you think we need it, but I guess my thought is if we, get where we're at, hopefully we can come up with a plan one way or another. You know, well, that was my question is, I mean, I, I think we should always be doing those studies, like that corporate America does that, but we don't have, I mean, that, there's gonna be an expectation. When we get the study back, there's gonna be an expectation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And where are we gonna get the money to fulfill those expectations? Right. But if we don't go this far, <laughs> we're going to have to make some decisions because where are we going to get the money? I think we've gone through some of this discussion before was, and I was one of the prime ones kind of nagging at Kevin over there about your question right there. And however, the answer is, what are we going to do if we don't have staff? So we have to at least get some knowledge. Yeah. And, and I, I don't thinking. disagree. I'm just saying there's going to be an expectation. Oh, yes. Yes. Just be careful what you wish for. Yeah, well, I know. Because we don't have the money to do it, anything. Well, and we can't afford to lose staff to close school either, so no, we got to do it's something. Be that much, but. Well, okay, anyway, so is there any other board members before I let Missy have her turn? Okay, but Missy, I just want you to know, we have to do our board business first, so please don't expect that you can jump in. I just well, I noticed that the last couple meetings that people got to jump in, so I thought no, we got to No, only, only, I just wanted to clarify, only so, when yeah. I so asked I just, the I people. I thought it had changed because other people had... No, it on. didn't, but go ahead. Anyway, I just wanted to say that I totally agree with Jessica on that. There's going to be an expectation after mm -hmm. you do this. You have said over and over and over you have no money. Mm -hmm. um, and in this thing right now, all that's saying is business office again. Are you for sure doing all these other places? Because business, I would tell you after, out of the last three out of five meetings I've been at, we talk about the business office. Poor business office, overworked, underpaid. We are losing janitors, we are losing nice, good secretaries. Buster and we works. always come back to the, the business office. Do I think they do a great job? Yes, I do. I think their job is important. And Raksh, you even told me that our school cannot run without the business office. But right. guess what? Your school cannot run without your teachers. Absolutely. And your teachers. I'm a teacher. I know. And your parents. <laughs> and your teachers and your parents. And yeah. I can tell you, just from being on the union, that these people are very upset right now that the business office keeps get getting brought up. Okay, so, I'm going to stop you so, right no, there. No, I'm not saying anything bad about them at all. No, I'm I, just saying I'm giving you a I'm, heads up that yep, there's going thank to be you an so expectation. Much for that. And I think Kevin, that point of clarification, did you not say that we're studying the... Okay, this uh, is the at-will group to start with. Yes. Okay, that includes a business office, transportation, you know, the second, as long as this goes well, 
we're going to be right back going and they go into phase two, which is the 510 group. Right. Okay. The next group again, if you want to keep going with bribe B paras, and, and again, I'm not saying last, but the, the contract with the teachers is settled, as I mentioned last mm -hmm. meeting or the one before. Not that we can't look at it, but I mean, if you were ranking right now due to we're going to be going into negotiations, I mean, that's the order I would go in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you've got a lot of support in terms of teacher support, you've got a lot of support on this board. In terms of parent support, you have a lot of support. You always have for many years, whether you realize it or not, you've had a lot of support for parent wages, etc. too. We have a lot of talk that you guys don't even know about either. And we're constantly trying to figure out how to make it better for everyone. So, we're not bad people anyway. Um, I, I, okay. would, I would never say that. Just okay. Just so you know, I'm, All right. that is not what I was saying. Okay, sounds good. All right, now we are now at, did we get a motion? Forgot. There's a motion and a second. That's okay. what we're discussing. All those, any more discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, we are now at committee reports. Mitch, you have I, Mitch's, I, right? I have Mitch if you're, okay. Um, very well typed out. Um, I thank him. Uh, here it says, uh, FHS school board members, hello, sorry that I was not able to attend today's, be today's meeting. I'm at a golf meet at Eagle Ridge. Here's what my report is for the month of May for Cape. Uh, junior Cape night for fourth through sixth graders happened on May 10th and was a huge success. Over 100 students attended wow. and student council sold concession as a fundraiser, raised $200. Wow. Um, that was yeah, last week busy. Um, Cape will be sponsoring summer movie nights in the park once a month um, as a family drug-free event. Watch the school Facebook page for the dates of these movie nights. Uh, Ms. Velasquez is planning Cape summer activities like fishing on Rainy Lake, trip to Kettle Falls, and the Bear Sanctuary as well as the Ely trip. You can sign up for these uh, trips through Skyward. These activities are for 6th through 12th graders. Cape and student council members will be doing Cary Park and FHS cleanup next week. On the student council side, uh, student council members will be doing a highway cleanup this Thursday. Student council has voted on its members for next year. You can see who is on uh, student council by looking at our bulletin board down in the lobby. Student council also voted for next year's student representatives and I will be ser serving as student rep Sorry, you have to deal with me another year. <laughs> I'm just reading it. Uh, Minnesota Honor Society is doing senior spotlights and is working on putting senior signs in the yards. A uh, huge thank you to Maggie McBride, PCA, and Hasbargan Customs for the signs. MHA, MHS will be voting on board members for next year this Wednesday at their meeting. That's my report. Sorry for not being able to attend. Have a good evening, Mitch. Okay. Um, Tim, no, Missy, do you have a report for us? The student enrollment is at 461. That's up one student from last month. And then um, we just recently hosted our first STEAM night, which was a great success. We had a large turnout. I would say we probably have over 200 families there. For sure, we... Um, had 150 um, programs that were originally printed um, by Sun North, and we ran out of those, had to make more, and we ran out of the lightsaber um, activity, and there was 150 of those made up, and those ran out right away, too. So um, wow. there was lots of positive comments from families while they were there, and after, just a lot of them saying that their kids have really enjoyed STEAM this year, and some have even said, while they were there, um, that their experience just at Baldell has just really been such a great experience all around. So that was nice to hear, and it was nice to see families engaging with their kids and building and problem solving with their kids. So we hope to continue that event and, and build on it. And um, to speaking of keeping along the same lines of science, the fifth grade leaves tomorrow for their annual star base trip, and that's um, where they go to Duluth to the Air Force Base for four days and um, participate in some science and STEM cool. activities down there. And then um, next week, or not next week, but the week after we'll host our end of the year PBS Carnival. We have preschool and kindergarten graduations coming up. Um, 
May 31st. Uh, those are will be drive-through graduations again, and then uh, we have our track and field day on May 26th, and that's for grades four through six. So we're winding down. The kids don't feel like they're winding down, but we're winding down. <laughs> I, I brought my grandson to the STEAM thing. It was absolutely wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and I did see some board members there, so thank you for stopping by to check out the well, event. Well, I wanted to say, I apologize, I couldn't come, but I heard wonderful things about it. It was great. Okie doke. Busy, busy, busy. Yes. Yes. Same line, though, thank you to Misty and the staff, and I'm going to say community volunteers that it took yeah. a lot of people to put to put that on. Oh, right, and there were teacher volunteers yeah. too, no, from what I understand. What yeah, yeah. Thank you all. I think some of them were here. Thanks, Kim. Okay, um, and Tim. Uh, our enrollment, we're at 511. We're down nine from last month. We're down 19 from last year this time. Our second semester ends Thursday, June 1st. That's the last student day. And that's going to be followed by teacher in-service on the second. Our spring athletes are missing a lot of school this year due to the rescheduling of all the competitions because of the weather. So they've been working hard to stay caught up in their classes. Um, some of these kids are gone three days out of the week right now. So there's lots of, lots of sports happening right now. Uh, seniors will have a senior breakfast at the Elks at 8.30 on Friday, June 2nd. That's going to be followed by graduation practice in the high school gym. We are going to have a group picture then of all the students with their caps and gowns on in the gym. Our graduation then is on Sunday the 4th, and that is going to be in the gymnasium. So we're moving back into the gym and get back to normal this year. We will have summer school again this year. Uh, we're going to see what our numbers are. Last year we had a section of uh, 6 through 8 and a 9 through 12 and right now with the numbers we only have a couple in 6 through 8 and about 8 and 9 through 12 so we'll have to see what our numbers are we may just have one section instead of two and we have got all the furniture ordered now for our west end middle level program that we have we're going to take the study hall and we're going to turn that into an area where they're going to eat breakfast and then it'll be like a gathering area for students before school and then classes are going to be able to go in and use that. We've ordered uh, some different seating where we have some high tables and high seating and normal height cool. seating. There's a couch, of like a five or six section couch that's going to go along the wall. So we're getting that in place. We've gone through now and figured out teachers and room movement. And we've got enough lockers down there. We'll have all the kids in place. We're working on the transportation piece, getting them dropped off and picked up. So the plans are in place, and we're going to be ready to roll in the fall for that 6 to 8 program. It's exciting. It is exciting, yeah. We're going to have a couple letters. We'll have a, I'll try to get a letter out early to the parents, just kind of telling them what's going to happen. And then we'll have an orientation that will be a bigger orientation this year, probably for. We'll invite all parents six through eight and have it in the gym because things will be different. So we're going to really work to keep those classes down there and you know create that middle level concept. So we'll be working. <coughs> we are going to have a study skills class that all seventh graders will be required to take, oh, and then we're going to incorporate. And we're going to have all three of those first semester, and then second semester they'll go into a required exploring computer seven class, and then we're going to have a whole new component in each of those. So they're going to have help them get started with the year in the seventh grade. Sixth grade will have a homeroom kind of in their writing class. And we're still talking about how we're going to do this in the eighth grade. So we're continuing to meet and we'll continue to kind of grow that program next year once we get it in place. How are the teachers that have to go back and forth feeling about it? Well, I think people are good. It's going to be, it'll be busy. We think for supervision it's going to be nice because yeah. we are going to have a lot of people going back and forth. Uh, we've probably got four teachers that are going to have to move into that area and a couple that are going to move out, so we're kind of changing spots. Mm -hmm. um, there are going to be a lot of teachers, though, who are going to have at least one class in that area, so there will be a lot of movement, but I think the, the staff seem to be behind setting up and getting that middle-level program. Good. I think this year's seventh grade are going to be the ones I need to get into and talk to and sell them on it because I don't know if they're going to see it as quite as great mm -hmm. as maybe the sixth grader. And I think the ninth through twelfth graders are kind of happy to think that they're going to have a ninth through twelfth they'll be back to. So Good. We can give some growing pains, I'm sure. Good. Thanks, Tim. Um, Kevin? Okay, for, 
first off, um, before I think about it or forget about it, is as far as graduation um, on June 4th. Um, if anyone's not going to be in attendance, again, there's no requirement. We'd love to have everyone. But it's it's a fun festivity, um, but we like to set it up so it looks like we know who's yeah. attended. You know, number of chairs for the right number of people. So right now, I don't need an answer, yay or nay. If someone you know knows they won't be there, let me know. Otherwise, again, we're back in here. So typically, um, if the students come two o'clock, two fifteen, two thirty, as long as we know you're coming. And it's at Falls High School. And it's at the gym. Um, and, and again, the reason to come back is it just, we did for COVID for one reason, but the arena is big. Mm -hmm. And it almost feels too big mm -hmm. when you're graduating to 80 kids, you know, and you have families. The gym will be just fine. I mean, it does get a little warmer maybe, but I mean, it's done in about 45 minutes, you know. So anyway. They'll set the stage up. They, we don't need you for practice or anything, but we'll meet you know, roughly my office area, and then we'll go down and usually come in this side, in and, in and out. So, um, you have the speaker lined up. Yep, they uh, Tim Tim worked through the um, nomination speaker who's doing pictures. Had the students vote on all that stuff, so that's that's all in place. We're gonna this, we have one faculty speaker, and we're gonna have two student speakers. Okay, and, and they chose. So anyway, um, put that on your list to um, let me know if you're not going to be here. If you're going to be here, we will we'll expect it. Okay? Um, and then we do, just if you haven't participated, we do divvy up if there's certain kids. You know, we usually take a left side and a right side. There's two sides. Um, we can go back and forth. I mean, make it if there's mm -hmm. certain connections. Um, we'll make work the best we can. Um, we do have a request for negotiations um, with the para group. Um, and I sent out um, Tony, Jessica, and Joanne. Jessica responded. Um, I haven't gotten anything from Joanne or Tony. I don't need it right now, but I do need to respond to them and get it locked in. So um, if we could touch base. Um, Emily, do you want to speak and then I can? Yep. Um, so just letting the board know that um, we've had some family changes. And um, we are, well, Daniel's moved, but we are moving the rest of us down to the cities. So I'm going to be resigning and stepping down from the board. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to let everyone know that. And it's certainly a hard decision. And certainly enjoyed my time being on the board. So Thank you so much. We appreciate you. everything you did for us, Emily. Um, so anyway, I, I have not went through the process, but for the most part, the board does have to appoint to fill that position. Okay. Um, She'll give us a resignation. We can start some conversation now. Um, there's a wide spectrum of how we do this or can do it. I, I spoke to MSBA because I haven't worked through it. This person, once appointed and go through the process, will fill through an election in November. Okay, we will have to run the election. Okay. So it'll just be the short Short time. term, okay. correct. And now you, you can do it several different ways. You could, you know, ask for applications, you know, post it, so to speak. Um, you could put a questionnaire out, you, you know, with two, three, four questions, have them, you know, answer questions. You could just ask, you know, for to write a paragraph of interest. Um, you could then take that, just like you were hiring, you know, go through a process to weed it down if there were enough, and then interview. You can just go and, hey, let's talk, let's throw some names around, ask someone, and appoint them. When you do appoint them, it's a resolution to appoint so-and-so. Then there's a 30-day, I'm going to call it wait period, where if group in the community didn't like it, they could try petitioning, you know, getting enough signatures not to accept that person. Okay. Assuming that doesn't happen after 30 days, they're seated and then they serve through, I didn't ask whether it's, you know, through the election date, you know, November or whatever, or, you know, normally the local elections in Probably November, January. they start yes. January 1. I didn't ask that and I didn't think about it until. I'm assuming um, it would be January 1st. Yeah, I think that was my mm -hmm. assumption, but we'll find that out. So either they'll serve, for the most part, you know, just say you had someone nominated and ready to go 1st of June, it's the 1st of July, so for the most part it's July through about half a year, you know. So um, so that's where we're at now, um, is thoughts from the group on what type of process. Now, again, I, I, I called and talked to um, a person at MSBA and they said, you know, 
in a variety of ways. You know, some places have looked and said, hey, who's been a past board member that could step in, you know, know kind of what's going on. They've done that way and just, you know, um, there's others like Duluth, they said, took um, applications and they said they would interview all. He said, I wouldn't make that statement because they had 23 or 24 Holy applicants. It took them four nights, you know, because they had said, so they said, you know, don't say that. If you're going to take applications, take them and do it like you would do for hire and narrow it down if you need be. No, if there's only three, maybe you do a five-question interview. But they said, you don't have to. You know, if you can come out, somehow come to a consensus and want to point, it's your, it's your board meeting or something in between. So that's where we're at, conversation of what you would like Thoughts. Okay, well, I, I'm sorry, I'll let you talk in just a sec, Tony. Um, I was talking to Kevin, and I would, I would like us to take a little bit of time to think through what Kevin just said, and we could meet next week if we wanted, after we heard all of our options, and we could have a short meeting and just discuss what, which way we wanted to do it. I'm just throwing that out, but Tony, go ahead. I was just going to say, Emily had um, messaged me this morning, and I kind of went into panic mode. Um, <laughs> so I did reach out to Jen Windows just because she was on the board before, and she wanted to be on there again. Um, and I just said, this is what's happening. I don't, being you're already, have a, already been on the board, know the whole process. Maybe that could be a, you know, step in, but just an idea. Cause I reached out to see you go, <laughs> Emily. We've got two board members that did it. Yeah. I'm waiting her response. <laughs> My opinion yeah. is post. Is what? Post it. Okay. If people are interested, then they can apply. Okay, but you want to come go for up? that short six month span just yep. to try to train and do all the other. Yep. I think Lassard, who is next in line in the elections, would be an awesome candidate. That's who the community voted. Have you reached out to him at all? No, I didn't know Emily we was didn't resigning. Know anything oh, about okay. oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I just learned <laughs> about it this morning, so I just went yeah. into a. Uh, yeah. I. I there's too much room for people to say, oh, you're picking so-and-so because of yep. blah, blah, blah. Let people apply, run it like you're hiring somebody. And, and if just, that's the case, then I, you know, again, I'm new to this project. I think we should come up with, you know, something for, you know, like an application, do, you know, have them fill out or something, right. something for the group to look at. I mean, then do you want to go through an interview process where you actually interview them? Do you yep. want to look at the two? But again, now, just a minute, I want to, Bruce, you got anything to say? Well, I, I like the idea of Jen because of her experience, mm -hmm. but I also understand where you're coming from. So, but if Jen's interested, then she can put it up. Right, then she, then she can apply. She can apply. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. That's my thought. Does anybody want to, get, oh, Emily? I was just wondering if MSB has an interview or an application that's already put together. So I didn't ask for. Interview. I didn't ask for that. They just like said I got actually responses from two different people here. Um, um, Greg Abbott sent the original one. I think that Gary passed it on because he was busy. But um, like he said, he would also recommend not interviewing everyone who applies. Right. This was the Duluth example. Um, you know, but no, I, I can ask and see. But then Ms. Gary, which is the one I had the conversation, announce it and take apps, interview and select. Or you can you know, just simply identify someone, ask them you know, and appoint or something in between. So I mean, um, okay. I can ask and see if there is or we come up with. What if we just use like what we use to put in the paper all those questions that we answer, mm -hmm. like the I initial. That's a good idea. Just then they're answering the same questions so we kind of get a feel of who they are and what they, you know, want, expect or want or. That's fair. Do you guys want to do that? You don't need to. I don't think we need it. to have another meeting for no. it, honestly. That's just my personal opinion. So, okay. so let me ask you this, if we, I go to the paper, find those questions or whatever, or journalism, whoever asks. They should be on our board or um, on our um, website as well. Get a you know, sheet put together with that electronic, obviously. Put it out Facebook. Do you want us to take an ad out in the paper? Or is Facebook and the web page fine? Um, I think Facebook and the web page. Okay. Yeah, I mean, word of mouth, get around. I mean, I can yeah. like, blast it on tomorrow on the radio again. Right, yeah. You know, I go on. Um, how long do you want it open for? You know, assuming it can get out in the next day or two. Two weeks? Yeah. Two weeks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then that would give a good couple weeks to go through all of the. Mm -hmm rest of the process. And then are we going to come back as a group as a whole and look at the candidates or do you, and again I'm asking this as a question, um, and then figure out if you want um, 
to interview all yeah, of them. Yeah, I think we yeah. should come as a whole, come together as a whole. And I guess I will have to do a little bit of asking on whether that's actually public. And I mean, we sit and talk about, you right. know, every candidate here, you know, or is it, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. let me, maybe let me communicate Clarify. with you um, mm -hmm. and um, on next steps, let's go that way. Perfect. Okay. Um, the next thing, I gave you a copy, and kind of like um, almost, uh, again, this is um, the appraisal um, on the grand piano. I would say it is ours and ours only. You know, we're, we're going to try selling something. I don't think we should put it in a paper type deal of, you know, exactly what, right. you know. Right. My question is, do, how would you like to proceed? And secondly, um, you can take a look at it, but I mean, do we put it out? Yeah, you, you know, like the, the guy that came and appraised, you, you know, I'm just going to be honest, he said, you know, it, there are people that have done Craigslist, you know, Facebook, that type thing. They've went fairly quickly. There's places that have, you know, paid to move it to, he said, a showroom. But he said, obviously, that costs money, you know. And, yeah, if they're sitting in a Steinway place, it might generate a little more money. But he said, most often, you put it out, and as long as you're not in a hurry, you know, and you can read and see what they, you know, say for a ballpark. He said, I would, you know, start a little high and sit down. You know, he said, you never know. There could be someone in your area that would well, love back is interested in it? Well, they, they will be one, but that's going to be the next question. So we got to come up with a price, and is it, you know, best offer? And we say a closing date of this, you know, date, and you can refuse all if you want, like you did, or do you want to set a price, and, you know, they are going to be interested. What I've been told, you know, I mean, as long as we're not trying to do something, they, they know what roughly what it's worth, too. This is actually a group that tunes that piano. So, I mean, you know, um, it's not a huge secret, but um, on the flip side, it's where you want to start um, with a price, you know, and like you say, do we first person to bring, I'm going to throw it out, 35000 it's theirs? Or is that, you, you know, do a best offer and you see what it garners, you know, and leave it open for two months? I mean, you, you know. I think it should be best offer and we But you have to set a out. threshold. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, it's like selling a car. You know, you put a price on. Yes. And, and yeah. then if someone brings you that price, yes. it's yeah. yours, you know. Then that's what we need to decide. And we will post, like I say, as many ways as we can find. Um, like I say, I don't know if you've had time to read. Do exactly. I don't want to talk number. You know right. what that exactly says, but um, you want to go forty thousand, thirty-five, sixty. I mean, where do you want to start? You know. Um, I say fifty. I'm good with fifty. Yeah, I say forty-five. So fifty's good. Okay, let's start at fifty. Okay. Or have that at the threshold. Okay. We'll okay. put it out and see what happens. And like I said. We don't, you know, it's not that it has to be sold tomorrow. Right, we can always come down. And take yeah. offers if someone throws something else to right. you and see how it goes. I don't, I don't think we should go any lower than the, what he identified Agreed. as the fair market value oh, I, I in that condition. So, yeah. But that's what, like he said, it, it might sit for a year or two years. Yeah. You'll get that value. Yeah. Someone will come along. Someone may come along tomorrow. How long, said, just, how, how long has it sat already? Well, they use it and they've been used for many years. Yeah. And, you know, Okay. Okay. So that's we'll get moving on that. Kevin? Yeah, I have a couple more things um, quickly. Um, Apple bus drivers were back to have a conversation, and I did not have an answer of when we would be willing to, you know, either settle. Again, they're an at will group. It's going to be part, if you want, of that study. Of course, there's a couple of them want to know because there's neighboring district, and so again, I don't know what to tell you. I can tell you Little Fork is offering $27 an hour. It was in the paper. Um, we're at $22.56 or something like that. And again, there's an administrative group. That's who typically does the negotiations. And again, I say negotiations. It's you set the, you know, what you're going to pay them. And, yet, you know, for any of that little group. I mean, now, if you want to talk with any of them, they're willing to come talk. But there's a couple that are definitely interested in if we're going to move or not. I said, you'll get something, but I don't know where, you know, and I told legislatively we're waiting to see. I think we're somewhat no of, you know, but. 
How can we do that when we don't even know where the para wages are going to be sitting? Well, I mean, but if you start with some group at some point, you settle with someone. And again, they're just part of, I'm just going to be honest, they're part of the whole at will group. And I'm not saying you have to settle with the whole at will group or solve that because we want this information. But on the flip side, I mean, we have a competing thing whether we can compete or not. Well, when is it that we're supposed to hear from the uh, from Governor Walls? What's what's going to be the well by the end of the week? Suppose I mean for the most part, and again, it's going to take weeks, maybe a month or so, to truly know every piece that is going to affect us. I mean, but my week. understanding well, no, but my understanding is it's four percent the first year, two percent the second year. It's going to be um, hooked to inflation. You know, for that piece, we're going to get um, you know money on. Um, the cross subsidy now exactly what that pencils out what the costs of the unemployment program and the family leave for you know all that's going to take time to but, come. Uh, but I thought para wages was that's supposed out to be that's out that's out they already removed that's, that yeah. what, what is the what are the para wages at then Wages. They were going to set a threshold. Yeah. It was in front of the well, legislature. That, that, that got, I think that yeah, got, that got taken out. You know, the it's minimum. Well, I believe the minimum wage. Of course, maybe yeah. things can okay. come I back. It's not, but no, the minimum it. wage of twenty-five dollars an hour. I believe went out. I'm sorry, I wasn't it's, following. That. You mean as in went out means it's dropped. It's not. Going it's not going to be part of the okay. end all be all. Is my understanding. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. But like you said, I guess my it's not removed from the bill. Removed. Yeah. Okay. And, and like I say, I I don't know what to say other than you have, like I say, um, a group competing. Either they need to know, and we need to know what the repercussions are. I mean, if we're not moving more than 3%, or if you're going to go to $25 an hour instead of 22 56 23 or 24 I mean, I guess I would think, and again, I'm just you know, going back, and everyone should have got a copy. If you weren't at that meeting, yeah. I have a couple copies downstairs. You know, it's quite a list. Maybe it's worth the group meeting with this group, and I mean, I think I think we should meet with them. Or throw on a what do you guys? Well, I think we should meet with them, but we need I need to have something in front of me that tells me what does like if three percent. What does that mean monetarily? I like, tell you, yeah. yeah, because I can't. I mean, I can't sit and have a conversation with anybody about pay or raising pay or not raising pay without knowing what it's going to do to the budget. I don't have a money tree. The, the um, administrative group is Joanne, Emily, and Tony. And that's a group that's dealt with the at wills in the past. Again, everything comes back to the board as a whole. Um, if you want me to set up a, a time to meet with them, or you just want to meet and talk about, you know, this. Oh, this I, I have two copies downstairs, packets. If you weren't at the meeting, I, had, yeah. I keep a copy just like someone yeah. wasn't here. So they're sitting downstairs so I, we can stop and get them from that meeting if you weren't here, but everyone got one. At, yeah. Um, so, Tina, how do you feel? I guess I think people need to meet and move forward because I don't know what are you, you guys thinking be about meeting for. with the with the whole group. With the I would group say we meet as a group mm -hmm. with, with just them. us first. Just the us. three yeah. can go. You guys are right? Here's sure, what I think we that's do. a good we idea. Yeah. Do. yeah, that's good. Uh -huh. Okay, I think we got a plan. So, so let me ask this though, with with just just because this could go on, um, Emily's on that. Would someone else want to take? And again, I'm, I mean, you're technically yeah. part of the board right now, yeah. but within a month or so, yeah. if this mm -hmm. isn't done, someone else steps in. So I would. Joanne, you're part of it, and Tony's part of it. Jessica, yeah. or Jessica, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I was thinking Jessica. Whoever is sorry. Yeah. Well, am I already? No, no, you're not. No, sorry, I'm not. Joanne. Me. Sorry. I, I'm, <laughs> That's my mother. Yeah. <laughs> That's Are you okay, thinking. Rox, with Jessica? Yeah. You're okay. Alrighty, and the last thing I think I have is um, Jessica could ask for uh, some conversation on a dean of students with um, Lisa um, giving us her resignation. We, um, well, verbally given us a recommendation, and again, just like anyone, um, I'm sure St. Louis County is going to hire, and then we'll have a formal in writing, but we posted to get the process going, um, and um, I don't want to speak for, you know, mm -hmm. is it time to reduce the dean position? Well, I, I just in general yep. positions as they yep. come up, mm -hmm. I feel like it's very conflicting to the public mm -hmm. and to our teachers and to everybody else in the school district when we say 
We don't have enough money to give raises, but any time a position comes up, it's like posted, like that. Like I think those need to come for conversation. Do they need to be replaced? And that's how it's done. We said we were gonna run this more like a business. That's how it's done in business. You reevaluate the position when it comes up. So is the position, do you take the job duties and divvy them out to other people? I mean, that's what we need to have to talk about. Okay, first I wanna hear from everybody. I wanna hear from Lisa. Yes. So. I'm on board with Jess. We already talked about this because we were told coming onto this board that that's what was being, that's what was being done, mm -hmm. but we haven't seen that happening. We're seeing that they're just posted and replaced. Like for example, the athletic director. Do we really need one? I mean, Little Fork doesn't have one. Their social studies teacher is also their athletic director. So I mean, that's already a done deal. But just for example, I think it should have been talked about, you know, because like he's saying, he's looking at reducing what was it, two hundred thousand dollars worth yeah. of the budget. Mm -hmm. So we should have looked at that, like when Terry Mason left, we should have looked at at that time versus hiring a teacher only to cut them six months down the road yep. or a year later because you don't have the budget for it. Okay. So I think, yeah. Okay, Bruce? Yeah, I, I would agree that, it, I mean, we're always looking at assessing, evaluating all, everyone, and administration positions, administrative positions need to be discussed and assessed as well. But I am very curious, and I have a lot of respect from Tim and Lisa mm -hmm. to get their input Absolutely. as far as um, uh, what their feelings are there, uh, about uh, whether it's reducing or eliminating. I don't know what the answer is. I don't, I don't right. know where we're at right now, but I'd like to hear from them. Okay, Emily. I, I would agree. I think it does. I think it's always good to look at all of the different positions and really kind of having that time study to know what the positions do. And, you know, just I agree with what Bruce is saying is respecting and wanting that, you know, discussion from the people that have the boots on the ground. But I think having that well-rounded conversation is very helpful. Okay, Tony? My only worry is, like, trying to take all of these things and divvy them out to somebody else because mm -hmm. I know right now you're probably dealing with a lot of, like, Behavior. Behavior issues. <laughs> so I'm just wondering how anybody else is going to step out of their areas and step into that. Because how about how many hours per day do you feel that you're dealing gonna, with that part of it? We're going to get there. We're going to yeah. get there. I want to have Joanne talk. But is sure. there any more you want to add? No, no. Okay, Joanne, how no. do you feel? No, I agree. I agree with everything that's been said. I think, you know, as we go, we need to look at positions. And because of our budget, we really need to be aware of that. Okay. Okay, Lisa and Tim, maybe you guys could, I don't care if you, you know, talk as a back and forth or whatever. Well, thank you for taking the opportunity to ask about the position. I think, um, as with any job, sometimes we don't always know what, you know, other people's yeah. jobs you know, are all about and what they are, you know, what's involved. Um, and um, when I was asked to take this position this year, um, I fully realized um, the large responsibility of the dean of students. Um, it is an incredibly critical role in our school district, in our school community, um, for physical safety, but also the psychological safety of our children. Um, we really have to have a, a Kids have to feel safe in so many ways um, in order to thrive um, as learners. So, um, I, as you all know, I, I used to teach elementary uh, for many years. In elementary, we handled uh, discipline a little bit different, uh, differently because we were in self-contained classrooms for the most part. We would have, you know, perhaps 25 students we'd be in charge of. Um, we'd have relationships with their families. Um, so, and we would have the time throughout the day to really dive deep into behaviors that we would observe with our students. Um, in coming to the high school, um, that, that looks a little different. Um, our students uh, switch classes every 50 minutes. Um, that really equates to less time that teachers have with students to um, really dive deeply into things that are happening. Um, older students don't um, really tell you what's going on all the time either. So it takes a little more work to um, investigate things that are happening, underlying issues that are happening um, with 
struggles, challenges, relationships, bullying, um, and those type of things. Um, so I just, I made a little list of some of the examples of my daily work. Um, it really takes a long time um, to do investigating. Um, I do a lot of that throughout the day. I'm talking to teachers. I question multiple students. Um, I spend time analyzing camera footage, um, determining consequences because that can look different depending upon the situation, the age of the student. Um, we do a lot of, I do a lot of problem solving with students um, so we can move forward in improving their behavior choices. Uh, I meet with parents frequently. Um, a lot of the time consuming incidents that I work with, um, we have general conflict management. Uh, there are bullying incidents. Um, I have fights. Uh, I have students who are defiant in the classrooms. Uh, multiple classrooms, sometimes all at the same time. Uh, teachers need support too. Um, they need advice in terms of how to deal with situations that are happening. Uh, we've had some emergencies and health issues. Um, students are having a lot of anxiety. Um, Post-COVID, um, we're, we're really seeing a lot of that, so I work with those students as well as other support staff in, um, in our building. Um, we've had threats. Uh, we've had vapes. Um, we've had uh, weapons, uh, cyberbullying, big one right now, very time consuming. Um, and also conflict outside of school that ends up spilling into school um, where students um, may feel affected by the problem and they just feel like they, you know, they can't learn. They're, they're feeling stress and um, they're struggling with learning because of something that happened outside of school. Um, so I work a lot with those students. Um, I do um, safety dog searches. Um, uh, once a month and then I also supervise three lunch periods and that really gives me an opportunity to connect with students um, in a different way um, having those conversations about things that are happening and touching base with them. I spend a lot of time with sixth graders during that time um, so my day is very full. Um, I usually eat lunch at my desk while talking to a student and my standard um, response to them or my conversation is, do you mind if I eat while we're talking? Because I'm really hungry, it's 2.30. Um, so it is, it, it is a really, really critical um, position. And I have to say that until I um, was in this position, I had no idea. So um, and if you have other specific questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. I do. do do we have a social worker in the school? We have a social worker in both buildings, mm -hmm. and we also have, at this point, a home interventionist. For so how does, how does that connect to what Lisa's doing or not, or should they be doing more of what <coughs> she's doing? I, I just, I don't know. I just, I guess I would think that they would be more involved in some of that kind of They're stuff. They're incredibly involved. They're okay. busy all the time. In fact, um, we have students, you know, waiting outside their door for them for when they, when they take a lunch or are out of the building for something. Um, they are full capacity right now um, working with students. Um, they're working with students, you know, obviously our, our social workers working on probably more um, intense situations. Um, and then our home interventionist has been, been doing a wonderful job in working with a lot of the um, anxiety, a lot of the attendance and truancy issues that we've had. Mm -hmm. So, and we work closely together. We communicate about things that are happening um, and how we can, you know, if they get information from a student that I can use in my investigation or what I'm working on, you know, okay. we, we really help each other with that. Okay. And I would say, and I don't want to speak for Missy, it would be the same thing. Um, you, you know, over at the elementary, sure. um, you know, she helps immensely with, you know, high flyers, different when you're having issues. So social workers? Correct. Yeah, yes, you, you know, and I, it's greatly appreciated to have Jordan and Chelsea. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, funny how it flipped over. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Tim, is there more that you can explain to help, uh, I think, differentiate between social worker and dean of students? Well, over in this building, Lori's involved a lot with the LGBTQ community, so mm -hmm. she's down at that end, and so she's kind of our front runner on that, as far as working with those students to get things set up. Um, she's our connection <coughs> to the truancy court, so she's dealing with a lot of the, the 
attendance problems and when letters get sent out and when things get referred. So she sits on the truancy team and she does a lot of work with social services. So students who are involved with social services here, she was a county worker before she mm -hmm. came to us. So she's got a lot of connections. So she's working with those people to help with that. She's also part of the, the Judges Youth Drug Coalition. So Lori's involved with that, as well as Lisa, and we're working on ways that we can do things to help the youth right now, so that's kind of an added thing. Mm -hmm. The LGBTQ community, that's something that has come about in the last eight years or so. Um, we're focusing on more SEL now, that's a focus. So there are a lot of new things that we're doing. I'd be really open to looking at where we could assign duties, but I really don't have anyone to assign duties to. I have a dean of students, I have a counselor, and I've got a social worker. That's really the only people that we could assign duties to. And maybe we need to look at some of the things that I do and that the dean of students do and just say, we're not going to do those anymore. What about the guidance counselor? Right, I said the guidance counselor. Oh, that's the other okay. counselor, yeah. Okay. And he is doing a lot with, kind of outline his job, please. Well, we've, online learning has become a bigger piece of what we're doing. College and the schools is now a bigger piece, so there were a lot of add-ons in there. Um, he's also working with a group of students. Um, they're on QCOM team, so they picked up groups for SEL, and he's got a group, I think, now. Social and emotional learning. Oh. Right, the social emotional learning piece. Um, works on the schedule, works on the scholarship pieces. Um, that counts. And counseling. But counseling is almost taking a back seat to everything else right now. Counselors really don't get to be a counselor. So we have one counselor for a thousand kids right now. And like I said, I would be open to looking at things that I do. Maybe there are things I do that I shouldn't have to do anymore. We can get rid of it and not do it. I know that I work a full day. I usually don't get out of here until after five. Um, I know that Lisa works a full day. So if we can figure out things to take away from that, and not do, I think it would work. But I don't and, know what those things are. Yeah, can you can you give us a, I know it's probably varied, but can you give us a, a summary of some of the things you do, like Lisa did, not, not line by line, but can you kind of outline? Well, I come in in the morning, I usually have parent phone calls. We're working on some of the details for teachers. We're working on, uh, non-tenure teacher evals. I've been working a lot this year. I'm starting to set that middle level learning piece up. Um, that's going to be a huge project next year to make sure that that gets off the ground. I mean, I'm going to probably live down there the first month just to try to make that happen. We are working on getting subs for our parents and our teachers. Um, I work with the AD on athletics. I work with Thing with uh, in the guidance office as far as scheduling, getting those things set up. I work with the colleges, with colleges and the schools. Um, Alternative learning? I have the, yeah, we have ALC, so I'm over there periodically. We're working with a lot of kids this time of year trying to get kids to graduate. So there are kids that I call. There are parents I call. Um, teachers are working hard with them too, but I mean, those are just things. And as we get to this time of year, graduation now is a huge piece of trying to get all those things lined up and set. Um, we just got done with the hiring process. We had an interview for FIED. It was part of the AD interviews. Um, depending on what happens with this position, we're gonna have to interview for that. If it ends up an internal candidate, then we're gonna have to post that position and try to find a candidate for that. So a lot of making sure we're staffed and kind of overseeing all those things. I work with Lisa every day on different disciplines, things that come up. Um, and she's done a great job this year, but she's learning, so there are things that we have to do together and try to show her. And like I told her, I don't have the answers how to do everything. I can tell you a couple ways not to do it, because <laughs> I've learned. Um, but I did dean of students and principal for two years. And to combine? I did, and we had an AD who was coaching, and I did most of the, yeah, I did a lot of the supervision of games, and it was a nightmare. I mean, I was here at eight and didn't get out of here until eight or nine every day, and it was. The problem with the dean of students position, you can't do it at six o'clock at night. You need the kids right. present to do it. You can talk to parents to a point, you can do paperwork, but there's not a lot of that job. I did the dean of students back in 2000, and I found that 
you were here working, but there just wasn't a lot you could do. Once the kids walked out of the building, then you had to get everything written down and get ready for the next morning because you needed those kids to be part of all those investigations. And from 2000 until now, education has changed. It's hardly even recognizable, mm -hmm. the things that we do in the schools and all the different pieces that we do, and mm -hmm. the teachers do, and the parents do, and that everyone does. So it's really changed a lot. Okay. But I'm definitely open always to looking at jobs and if there are things we can do to reduce. There are lots of things that I do I don't like. <laughs> but I'm saying that I don't have a bunch of people that I can assign things to. Right. Okay. And I, one of the one things that I'm wondering along those lines of everything that you guys do is, it is exceptionally and important and valuable. And sometimes it's not a matter of and I, I like what you say, Tim, there's a lot of things that I do, too, that I wish I didn't have to do. But sometimes there's things, I wonder if there's things that we could delegate to maybe a different, or a different position, potentially even not a counselor or a, but maybe a support staff. Mm -hmm. I know there's there's things that I've looked at even through my day of doing different things. I'm like, boy, I really could hand this off to a, an assistant. And maybe that position doesn't exist currently, but it is it could be potentially more fiscally responsible to hire an assistant or a para type position to help with some of those roles versus, you know, then it becomes that type of a juggling. And I don't know if those any, any of those things are on your guys' table right now, but maybe even looking at it through that lens. I just, I just want to say that um, as a special ed teacher uh, related to what you said, I would, when I first got on the board, I was really gung ho about helping with special ed and trying to get maybe a para to do a lot more of the paperwork and things. and. The special ed teachers were absolutely against it. They said, I've got to be a part of what goes on. Um, and, and, you know, when it comes to it, you would think, God dang, paperwork, you'd think you could pass that on. But the thing is, it's the knowledge in here that has to go on to that paper. And that was only lived by the people that did the investigations, et cetera. And that is part of the dean position. You know, mm -hmm. Tim passes things, you know, take it for the handbook. Since, you know, Tim has saying it. Um, Lisa owns it for the most part, and secretaries do hi help type it and format it, you know, and do that type of thing. So, I mean, there is some of that, but you know, it's it's the number of referrals, for instance. Lisa touches just about every one of them because there's a decision to be made. Now, the um, uh, study hall or ISS person took care of some of the attendance things that were sorry that were you, you know set in stone this happens boom here's the you, you know um, but any of the other whether it's defiance you, you know whatever the referral is she works through it does the the next step assigns whatever it is whether it's a warning whether it's our detention whether it's ISS um, they're significant it, you know, and now um, attendance, yeah, that comes in. There may be some of it done. Again, maybe it helped with some of that stuff that you don't have to touch. But, um, you know, if not, someone has to. You know, the, the computer just doesn't spit out what happens when you were having this conflict or that conflict. I have a question. So when, um, when we had the officer here towards the beginning of the year, can you tell me what, if there was, do you, do you see that difference now, not having that role in the school or and how did that affect your position like did you feel that um, that supported your role and things were a little bit easier or it, it's the same now you know what I mean I and I, I know that's kind of a hard hard question because it was very temporary good but good question it's a great question um, I Again, this was a new position for me, and the SRO was a new position as well, so we were learning together. Um, I felt very supported by our SRO officer. Uh, we had some emergency things happen um, with a threat, with um, some health emergencies um, that, he, that he helped with. We had some kind of some volatile situations with students, and he, his presence was very supportive. Um, he, he started to really build trusting relationships with the students. I already had those because I've had most of these kids in school. Right. And I really noticed that while he was here, he was um, 
building that capacity where you know with the students where they were starting to open up to him and go to see him for different things and then of course it was a short you know just a short position um, for him um, time wise but um, I did feel very supported um, I do miss that, that that I mean I'm gonna be honest that was it was just such a great support and good for the kids and helpful for families I felt in my opinion um, so. I think, Lisa, what possibly goes through my head and maybe Joanne's is could the, not that, I don't know that money-wise it would have been any better, but could the, that position have taken over any of your no, they, duties? No, they can't. They're not going to be doing discipline. You, you know, I'm not to say they can't be part of an investigation or a conversation, but they're not going to be entering referrals. They're not going to be sitting in on IEP meetings. They're not going to be running 504 meetings. You, you know, they're just separate. Right. One's employed. We contract. So that with really is... Uh, no, I mean, it's... I'm not going to say it couldn't reduce something or there couldn't be, you know, pros and cons or, you know... Yep. Um, but okay. 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 Um, data privacy issues. Data he's privacy. A, he's not a school employee. Right. 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 You know, okay. if they involved things where there was law enforcement that would have been involved at some point, so he's making a report, Josh would just step in and was part of it. Right. But as okay. far as like the things that Kev said, you know, there are a lot of discipline pieces where law enforcement would not be involved, and that would just send the family over the edge. If someone's having a meltdown, all of a sudden they have law enforcement, and then they're going to be like, what? Right. Right. Understandable. I guess I was just thinking to the point where, you know, somebody that has maybe the training that he had and started building those relationships, if that's something that, you know, maybe not full time, but a part time position, you know, to support everybody doing what they're doing now. And then we'd have to look at all the dollars, too, when you right. do Right. That. I'm, just, I'm just, again, brainstorming. Right. And you don't know, it could reduce over time, you know, just him being in the hallways, mm -hmm. he's walking around, he was building a relationship and he did a fantastic job at what he did. Mm -hmm. And who knows, over time, maybe there would be changes in the hallways with him just being out and about. Mm -hmm. So along those lines, that's a good point. Um, Lisa, in terms of like what you're seeing from interactions with kids or people that you're dealing with, are there more things that you could be doing on a whole group level or a whole grade level talking to kids? I mean, I always think of girls because girls are awful. <laughs> and I have girls, so I can say that. But, you know, like if, if you're seeing a lot of problems between girls, could, is that like a whole grade thing? You could pull them all in and say, hey, let's have this conversation and whatever and talk in general terms and that would eliminate some of the problems. I mean, I feel like sometimes we get so mired down in the day-to-day, -day, it's hard to take a step back and say, oh, maybe we could address this more globally, and I wouldn't have all this other stuff. I definitely think with um, the SEL pro program that we have in place this year for the first year, I think that, that those conversations um, are happening, not specifically, but maybe more generally. Um, as part of my job, I do meet with for example, I will meet with a group of 10 girls. Good. Um, and we do do that conflict resolution, um, which takes a lot of time. Usually it takes more than one day uh, because there's follow up mm -hmm. um, to that. So, um, you know, definitely anything proactively that we could do mm -hmm. would be helpful. And then, Tim, to your point about like a presence, I know that Josh. And I know I was the one that said it. You don't pay $62,000 a year for someone to have a presence. But what. Like, are, are you out in the boat? Are you out in the halls? Lisa, are you out in the halls between classes and the beginning of the I don't know, because I'm we not here. We just talked today. We have good intentions of being out in the hallway, but then what happens, that's the time the teachers are coming down to the office, they're going to the copy room, and I usually have a lineup at my door, and I can be out, you said copy room, not we coffee co room. Copy. Yeah. <laughs> I want to clarify. Copy. Copy. <laughs> copy room is next to my office. Oh. So when people are coming down to the copy room, they're sending jobs down because we don't have printers in all the rooms. So when they come by, there's usually a lineup at my door. And I feel like I, I want to be out in the hallways, and I try to get out as much as I can. But I also need to be there for those teachers because they may not have a prep until sixth hour, and maybe they have a chance to see me and there are just lots of little things that happen that people ask questions. So it's kind of a, a toss-up on am I more important in the hallway or am I more important 
dealing with those teachers when we need that help. And Lisa and I, like I said, just talked about this. So many times investigations start and it bleeds over into the next hour. And then it seems that during, in between classes is when a lot of things happen. So then things are brought in or like teachers will bring people into the office and then I get a call from Vicki, where are you? Or, you know, Lisa will call or I'll call her or Vicki calls her and, you know, where are you right now? We need to get so-and-so in the office. So in between time, I know teachers would love to have us out in the hallway. Sometimes it's just almost impossible to get out. I can attest to some of that in terms of both being a teacher and being a private person is that there are many times I'm waiting both by Missy's office, by Lisa's office, by Tim's office, just to get a turn. Yeah. And he's got phone calls that she's got and, and parents they're dealing with and kids and teachers and everything. So it's hard to find time. I not arguing that's hard. I get it. But it's it nice to get out. Yes. It's hard to get out. Would it make sense to structure your days so like Tuesday, Thursday you had office hours for those teachers and Monday, Wednesday, Friday you were out in the hall? I, I mean I just throwing stuff out. I can, and every teacher's got a different schedule. Yes. So no, but I mean, that would be great if I could do that. But then the students' problems come up at any problems. time. No, I yeah. get that, yeah. What about, what about the teachers? Like, are, are you out in the hallway? I, I am sometimes, yeah. but it's the same thing. You, you know, when a parent calls, when a board No, no, I get it. You, you yeah. know, it's all that stuff yeah. that, you know. Don't are the get, teachers out in the hallway? What? In between they classes? Try to be. They try to be, but the same thing. They may have a kid that stays for two or three minutes, yep. and I give them a little bit of extra help, or they're giving them with something that, yeah. hey, mm -hmm. let me talk to you two after class. Right. You, you know. Other times, they're very good about being out, and that's part of more we're out, the less things happen, and it's no different. And again, I did dean for several years. The more you can be out and about during like the lunch period, yes. the less issues you have. And we do have paras out there too, yeah, you know, and different people around. But again, you know, it's just like being on the use elementary. The more people that can be on the playground, the less issues you right. have, yeah, you know, and. Um, and um, and I know that years ago the. Uh, administrative at this building when I was housed in this building they set up a program they had gone to some kind of training and they were going to have certain hours in the morning they were going to meet with their secretary delegate all the duties they could to the secretaries then they were going to have certain time for themselves and then they're going to, and after about three months it didn't work oh yeah I know. I, you know it's pretty hard when you've got people at you all the time and great ideas but pretty hard to oh, it's like putting it on your calendar it works for the most part. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we book things, but then there are times when Tim, Missy, and I have things booked or whomever, and it falls apart mm -hmm. because X is going or Y is going. But again, if you can get it on there and have it booked, it's good. I'll be honest, the first week of school, we're very deliberate, myself included, about trying to get out and help the new kids and help, because you have to. Mm -hmm. Yet, you know, now when things start rolling, things start getting backlogged because, you know, you haven't been in or whatever. That's where it just become tough. And maybe this is a discussion for, you know, well, a smaller group or at a different time. Or... The tough part is, well, what I'm getting at, though, can I just stop that? But again, it is kind of timely. I mean, because again, we post it. We can post it any time. And I'm just going to be honest with you. If we had, you know, a teacher resign tomorrow, we're probably going to post that position and try and get applicants. Again, you know what I'm saying? That we can post. The board's the only one that can hire, you know, but if we wait, you know, like right now, we'll get some applicants from out of town, you know, at least we did last time. And so if we're going to try hiring someone, you know, to wait another month or two weeks, I mean, time is of the essence, you, you know, and the same thing with hiring, you know, any position as far as teaching, you know, or whatever, you know, just, just like, you know, them, they're going to move as quick as they can, and then pieces take, you know. Mm -hmm. So not to say we can't, come back in but at some point we need I think before the June board meeting we need to have made a decision because people are going to be looking you know people take jobs daily you know right now yeah, I, I think this it needs to be posted this it is, is posted yeah and it needs to continue to be posted and because this is when the water is stirred right now it's late it's, it's I at, mean, to be honest exactly I mean, it's, it's I late. Anything so late. we can't we can't plan on oh let's revisit or we can't eh, we'll, we'll talk it a lot of further and uh uh it's got it's we got to go move forward today and, yesterday and, and as I've, I've told several people i don't disagree what we're going to look like you know 
next year is going to be different than what we look like this year. You know, as funding changes, I mean, mm -hmm. there's no guarantee a dean position. No. There's no guarantee social worker. There's no guarantee full-time superintendent position is around. I mean, teaching position, parent, you, you know, everything. But is, we need to move forward as if it is. Well, no, correct. I'm just saying, yeah. just because, we're, you know, we're advocating for something right now, I don't want someone coming back, you know, nine months from now going, well, how can you? No, it's important. You know, every position is important, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know. So... From what I hear, we're going to continue to post the Dean of Students position, okay? And then we should bring a recommendation. I mean, because if we post, you know, it's posted. We're going to keep the process going, and then it's going to come to you in June, you know, with a candidate. Okay, Unless now we've had a, quite a bit of discussion. Is there more discussion from this side of the table? No. This side? I guess my only question is when do you do those those evaluations then? Do yeah, we're seeing when it's time to cut. Yeah. It, yep. It's going to be finance based. I mean, right now, you know, I mean, just like all the you know, things we talked about earlier yep. with class sizes and different things. Yeah, you know, you right. make so, a decision each so year. So I guess we just continue to post and do it, and then when we need to cut, then we cut. We don't evaluate as we go. That's, that's that, I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> I don't I, I, that's what I'm, but I mean, that's the way that we're going right now. But that's what we're doing. But when you say don't evaluate, the We've positions done are needed. It, it's no different. I'm not saying it's not needed, but is there a way that we can do it different? Yes. Is what I'm asking. Well, and I, and I think the thing that I think about is we can also do a lot of talk, but we don't have a lot of the information. You know, is there a way, you know, part of it is that uh, I think even in my field, we're constantly assessing what duties are being done by who, what makes the most sense, are there new cutting edge ways to do things? You know, is there a, a way to approach it like that so that these, so that this is kind of a constant assessing? Because it's, you know, I think that is the hard piece. It's like when these positions come up, it's almost like it'd be better just to have the, them ongoingly looked at, you know, or when they do come up, is there like a, a rubric that kind of can be kind of worked through or assess of is there things that can be combined or are there things that can be shifted around but I don't even know if any of us really know what all the duties are it's okay to hear kind of the anecdotal pieces which is are very valuable but you know that's not necessarily you know that's not like a time study either right mm -hmm. you know that it's different and that's part of, I'm going to say, the, and I'm going to use Tim Missy and I's conversation, and I'm going to say behind closed doors when we come with recommendations. I mean, right. you know, whether it's the sixth grade class that we talked about, fifth grade, I mean, they're not nice conversations for the most part mm -hmm. because, you, you know, we'd all love to have 20 in a class. You know, the same thing with the number of custodians, you, you, you know, I mean, or, or vice versa, you know, the dean. There's a lot of work there now. What happens when the pot is empty? Something may change, and it's going to affect everyone. I mean, it doesn't just affect us. That's it's going to affect teachers. And that's it's why. It's going to affect. But the, that's where I'm going. The right. same thing right now. You, you could up class sizes. You could reduce. You, you know what I'm saying? We're trying to run as much as we can with what we got. It, you know, and um, like I say, a year from now, that may be different. Get, you know, um, well, that's why I brought it up. It's yeah. easier to eliminate a position when someone's already leaving and not rehire for it than to have to go through and actually put a face with a position and say, yeah, we're going to cut that position. Because now we don't have this money that right. we did a year ago. No, there's, there's truth to that. But on the flip side, I don't see an opening of a full-time person until we obviously have to. You know, it's just like, I mean, you can pick any grade you want, not the you know, numbers in it, if you want to reduce a position. I, mean, I don't want to reduce no, my I know. position. No. But I'm just I saying, know. my whole thing for bringing this up yeah, is because it's easier to not replace a position when someone's moving on than it is to look at a list of names and say, okay, yeah, we're going to cut this. Mm -hmm. I'd rather cut a position. Yeah, that, that's one way to look at it. There's a, the other way to look at it is what is the timing of it and, and not worry about who's leaving when, more like what's our student body, what's our numbers, what's our finances, at what point should we cut a, a teacher, at what point should we cut. But we should always um, be evaluating those jobs and especially when they come up to be replaced. Right, but that's not the only time, I guess. Is I I'm agree. Saying. I totally agree. Yeah. Well, I think it was a very uh, worthy conversation. 
and uh, and for me, uh, the, any question that I may have had was answered tonight, mm -hmm. and they've expressed the value uh, as they feel, um, and so I have no problem with as one board member. I know where I'm at. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it either. I'm no. glad so, we had the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Thank I you. don't either. I I don't have a problem. <coughs> I don't know. Yeah, any. you don't know until yes. No, no. And I, I was just gonna say I don't have anything else. We're gonna keep going. I mean, obviously yes. until we. Um, okay, do. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else. On oh, okay, list. okay. And you have the community yep. one. Um, so Beth gave me this. Uh, pool uh, continues to be busy. We're training new lifeguards June seventh. We'll be adding three new lifeguards. That will give us five lifeguards for next year. We are collaborating with Camp Cooch for this training. We are offering oh, private, cool. swim, private swim lessons at this time, which we are full. And June 12th to the 22nd, we will be offering group swim lessons. Uh, youth classes, we have two um, on your own classes and one babysitting class recently. Both are well attended. We added a cookie decorating portion to the babysitting class and it was very well received. Adult classes, we finished up dog obedience class recently. I uh, got lots of great feedback from the class. We also offered defensive driving class, had no, over 80 attended. Wow. Um, it's a second with high numbers, which is good. Um, I've been working with community ed bylaws and we'll be bringing updates that we discussed to the September community ed board meeting. Um, I found law. I found lots of community ed bylaws online and had an upcoming training in August where bylaws will be one of the sessions that will be discussed. Bylaw updates will be brought to the September community ed board meeting. Cape Junior Crazy Cape Night, as you heard from Jake, um, was held May 10th um, for 4th to 6th grade. Same thing, about 100 youth swimming, gym activities, board games, successful night. Um, we gave each uh, prom goer a letter from the elementary student along with free ice cream. Uh, treat from Dairy Queen and other little goodies. They're sponsoring through drive-in movie theater or movies this summer, and then the cleanup that Jake talked about. And that's what she has. So. Okay. Questions? Okay. And nothing from Community Ed Advisory Board. Just to clarify, the movies are at Smokey Bear. They're not drive-in. Oh, I was wondering. Okay. Smokey Bear. There's a screen. Yeah. I falls nice has a screen. Yeah. Okay. And rec commission. Well, we meet this week. Wednesday. Yes. It, yeah, and basically. we're almost wrapping up that. Yeah, basically group. it's a lame duck commission, so. <laughs> well, there's a couple of things you have to work on. And right. I've been in conversation with um, Betty and the attorney, city attorney, it just went mind blocked, as well as um, Ted. And we should have what they're calling just a land use. Not we. She went away from recommending a lease agreement because lease implies that there's money exchanged. So it's for the most part, at least for time being, going to be a land use agreement, and that should be coming in June here. Um, for the most part, um, I'm just going to call it T-ball or um, baseball or whatever you want. It's it's not little league because that's yeah, a national summer ball. Summer ball that will for the most part be done. Um, they start playoffs um, like June 26th or 27th. Now, there is a group or two that may go on, you know, and do some extra. That's fine. It'll be covered. But, but uh, Community Ed is really not taking that on until next year because it will be, for the most part, done. Yeah. Um, our insurance is in place. Um, they're working on, you know, the softball, which will be a Community Ed activity this year. Um, it'll be going under rec. They're going to set the money aside in a separate so that it builds, you know, pay 50 bucks a group out for refs or whatever, that money then comes to us because it won't stay in rec, you know, because mm -hmm. they pay 500 bucks, I think, a piece or a team. So, you know, there needs to be a handover of that money because they're going to continue on for the rest of the summer. He is going to bring up with um, the rec, um, recommending that the maybe city take over the books because that money's going to have to sit for a while. We're going to have an audit done and so on. You know, someone's got to take over those accounts, so that is going to be part of the discussion. They have one group that owes them some money to be, to be talked about. But okay. I think we're going to be in place, and we're going to build the boat as we go, so to speak. Because we have things we've been meeting um, weekly with some of the business side of it, getting transition and things built and ready to go. Um, uh, we, we will get, um, just throwing it out there, um, <coughs> Tim tonight, he is going to come in some in June. 
Um, we don't know exactly how much, you know, it's fitting in a bill schedule and his. We'll do just a daily rate of pay for six days, seven days, wh whatever it works. <laughs> he starts on July 1 then under the contract, you know, but when we get in, Bill is committed to having a good transition. Um, if we need him, I, he's vested. And if he doesn't want to see us sink, he wants to come back So I'm confident it'll go well. Good. Okay, good. Anything else? Can I just add, add a couple things really quick? I just want to um, publicly thank Elizabeth Offerdahl for the prom, being a prom advisor. I know there was like, between her and the students and the parents, all the volunteers, the businesses that donated, the community members, um, they put in a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to say thank you. Mm -hmm. And I do know that that position, she did say she is not applying next year. So if anybody has any ideas for a prom advisor for next year, they're gonna be looking. And I also wanted to add, there's a group of us um, that are trying to get Hockey Day Minnesota to come here, probably 2028, because everything up to that point is earmarked. Um, so we're looking for um, anybody that's interested in joining us at our meetings or letters of support that we could um, submit with our application or any like fiscal sponsors that anybody could have any ideas on. So just wanted to toss that out there. And just so the board's aware, I gave a letter of support from you know a school standpoint that we're behind it's good for the community this and that there may be an ask i'll be honest there's one of the prime sites is back behind us here and, and again i've had to leave the meeting um you know they're, they're in the process of selecting is it four sites or something that they have to put in the application mm -hmm. um and like I say something will come to the board at some point for you know again none of us may be here you know in 28 29 30, you know who yeah. knows but it's kind of a you know, pledge, if you will. Of that, um, Takes you know, a lot of work, oh, yes. a lot of time, but it's so, worth it. But it would be, again, my opinion, phenomenal for the community. Yeah. So, be huge. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I have one question before we adjourn. Yeah. It's nothing about what we talked about tonight, but I'm just wondering, like, for some random follow up things, because I actually had a a parent microphone turned on. I actually had a parent reach out to me and ask whatever happened with the GPA. Oh, letter that yeah. was brought up by Mitch and I said, well, it was actually being worked on, but nobody knows that. And, and Tim has met with um, several people. Um, we are going to bring a recommendation. I mean, there isn't, I'm going to be honest, there isn't a fix-all. There's yeah. pros and cons of each. To change midstream was decided, no, I mean, because there's right. pros and cons. So as we update the um, handbook, we will have it, you know, something to bring to you, and um, and when you change, you change, you know, for in between year. for the year type deal, yep. um, because yeah, whether you do weighted affects some, non weighted, it, you know, does differently. Um, I, I guess that's not really like her question was like I knew it was being worked on because I'm on the board, but she didn't. She thought it was brought to us and then just dropped, like nobody was doing anything with that. So how do you follow up on things like that? I don't know other than Tim met yeah, with a couple of girls that came and you know and, and had a conversation. I mean, I, I had a conversation with one person other than you know. Yep. I think I, I think what you said before was you were going to bring us something. You said that before, so and because it's not going to happen until it won't be for until for fall. It the the be. other thing is there's not the calculation is not wrong. I mean, I just want that off. Yeah, there was right. an I error yeah. Yeah. instantly yeah. you'd fix it. Yeah. Right. Correct, you know, just like a teacher doing a grade. If there's a mistake, you fix it. But if you're going to change how you're grading, you probably don't do it midstream. Right. And, and that's the problem with this um, is, you know, like yeah, I say, we're going to have it in place. And if someone doesn't want to take, I'm going to say, an honors class because maybe it's not weighted or they want to take it because it's weighted, you make that decision ahead of time. Now, how it affects, and it's true, it, you know, the more classes you take, it affects that GPA right now. And it depends on how you look at it. The more weighted classes you take, possibly higher you can go. If you take more that are unweighted, it's a bigger divisor, if you will, and so it kind of waters it down type looking at it. You know, and so um, the other thing that came into play, um, and I'm just throwing ideas out, we'll talk to you about it when we bring our recommendation, is, you know, the, the kid that, I mean, if you take 10 classes, should you be able to get a higher GPA than the, the student that takes the required is three sport athlete working, you know, raising two kids, you know, whatever. 
you know, yeah. it's cool. I'm talking helping rate, you know, single, yeah. you know, whatever, you know, th there's a lot of things that go in and I'm not saying there's a yeah. right or wrong answer, but we see, you know, for the most part, there's a little different with a person or two right now um, that, yeah, it did affect. But again, it doesn't mean that the other people should be penalized if you were to correct it. And that's the problem right now. And when I say correct it, change it. Yeah. And so we will have, again, our recommendation, which, again, you know, say there's some honors kids that have voiced they want weighted continued. And I'll yeah. be honest, we're probably going to recommend going away from it. But again, there's a win and a lose. It'll take some time because, again, it'll, you know, fade out. I don't want to speak for sure, but I think that's where we're going, and it's probably... Well, at um, one point it faded in, so it's going to fade out. Correct, group of students... We never had it. Again, a group of students brought it, and it was, right. I'm not saying, a bad well, argument. Yeah, and I guess know. that, that it, wasn't her whole question, right. though. It's kind of like, how do we... Do we ever follow up? Like Jim Yao came here and he brought up the whole AI topic. We never even knew that then he came and did a presentation for you guys. Like how does that stuff get followed up? Right, well, that was kind of the... just to get back to the first one, because yeah. I think Kevin started getting into the meat of it, but he said that they were going to bring a recommendation, so they will bring a recommendation. So that will be followed up when the recommendation comes. But the AI thing, yeah. he came and made a recommendation, and then he said he was going to meet with some well, and, and teachers. He, and again, I guess I, you know, we have... And he did. I mean, I say yeah. we have conversations. I don't even want to quantify how many every day on right. different things. And yeah, he did meet, I think, don't, don't, um, I think Ted and Jim came and met, yeah. and, and they did come and meet with staff, teachers, gave a presentation, it, you know, we did, and I'm not saying it's done, I, yeah. I guess. But they're not, we don't say we're going to follow up. Well, I don't know, you know. Yeah, and that was kind of just the question in general. Like, they said they'll, you know, they'll heal, they'll listen into a board meeting, somebody will bring something up, and then they never hear anything of it again. Um, well, you know, so she didn't know that the GPA thing was being worked on. Or then I thought of the Jim Yount thing. Like, I didn't know where that went, you yeah. know. They'd have That's to probably kind of call question. and ask if they had the question right. that we didn't answer. Yeah. Emily's got to have her turn. She's I don't want to. I've got to have an opinion tell you that she can't anymore. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that just I, the, big, the bigger question I hear is what do you do if, not necessarily about a specific issue. And there is a general chain of command it, that if somebody has a, question it could should go to like the principals first and then it should go to Kevin and if it is something that needs follow up that that is that's how my understanding of it was when I took the board training so you know if anybody has a, tra a question at any point I think that's fantastic that they're tuning in and have questions we want yeah. you know, that would be something to be so be maybe if there's something that comes of a meeting that we that needs follow-up we need to make sure that it gets on that's the next agenda well there may not be able to have that follow-up right away well, right but we should discuss it at the time right. okay when are you gonna have this follow-up you gonna have it by the next meeting or the one after that mm -hmm. and it should be on that agenda mm -hmm. that's I think yes, more to the point. that's more was yeah. that an open forum though that Jim came in for yes yeah. yeah. normally you're not forum. supposed yes. to converse back and forth you know, but again, I would say majority of things get looked into, right. whether, you know, and again, I can speak to that many over the years that not everything yeah. does get acted on or jumped on or, you know. Or dated kind of for when the Well, whatever, I'm just saying, you know, um, you yeah. know yeah. don't take I think it the wrong way, call. save that conversation was out in left field, you know, not that we want to maybe Tim and I or Missy or whoever had a yeah. come. If we choose to do nothing, I mean, Right, and you I know. think that too was more informational for the yeah. board. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in terms of like the the right. GPA, GPA thing, we knew that you were going to follow right. up and work right. on it. So maybe that should have been something that we said, okay, in three board meetings, that's going to be back on the agenda as follow right. up. Yeah. Just knowing that he yeah. was looking into yeah. it, because she just people, thought it was dropped. People come on a variety like, of no. issues. No. Yeah, yeah, and that's just true. I don't want to bring that yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, okay. then, I mean, because that could have resolved, I mean, not saying 10 people called you, but yeah, right. maybe 10 people called and said, hey, where's this at? If it was on the next agenda, you know, then that could have resolved. And by all means, if there are questions, don't be afraid to, you know, push right. someone my way, you know, if it's generic yeah. in, in general. And yeah, board members whatever. could just remind Kevin, too. I, I suppose would that be okay to say, hey, Kevin, can, when are we going to put that on the agenda? Yeah. Yep, Something okay. like that. Yep, okay. that works. Okay, motion to adjourn? 7.15. I'll make that motion. Second. second. No. All those in favor? So, who, sorry, who got the second? Who went? Seven of them. Just kidding. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Thanks for adjourning.